the chapter. We're going to see what special day was approaching for Pansy. Chapter 16, first day on the beach. Today was a very special day. It was Pansy's 10th birthday. After getting permission from the neighborhood parents, the children with whom Pansy had become friends, um, they piled into the wagon and they all headed to the beach for Pansy's birthday party. While the children played games on the beach and in the shallow waters, Papa and a couple of the fathers went fishing further down on the shore. Mama and Mrs. Drake watched carefully over the high-energy gang of children while they prepared a table and began to build a fire for frying fresh fish. The big event of the day was when everyone broke up into teams and built sand castles. It became a contest to see which team could build the biggest, highest, most fancy castle. Pansy teamed up with Emily. Rosalind and Bethany worked together. Alyssa and Haley became a team, and Annie built a castle with Hadley and Madison. They were all careful and meticulous, making sure everything about their castles were perfectly formed, neat, and balanced. The two boys, Mark and Jackson, were a team. They built the tallest castle, but it looked more like a sand mountain than a sand castle. By the time the sand castle building was over, the dads returned with fresh with the fresh catch of fish. To Pansy, nothing tasted better than freshly caught fish right out of the ocean, into the pan, and onto her plate. Soon, the smell of fish frying filled the air. Mama always knew just the right spices to add that would make everything delicious. The dads judged the sandcastles, then gathered everyone around the table to sit down and eat. Once seated, Papa removed his hat, as did the other men, and offered thanks to God for your food and a safe journey and newly found friends. Everyone joined in, saying amen at the meal, and the meal began. After dinner, Mama brought out the finest, largest chocolate cake she had ever made. They had to brush a little sand out of the frosting, but all in all, it was the best birthday Pansy could ever remember. After the dinner was over and the dishes were cleaned, Everyone gathered around the campfire for roasting marshmallows and telling stories. Tonight, Papa told the story of his younger days on the ranch in New Mexico. Papa had lived on the ranch way back in the 1880s. This was a wild time in New Mexico. Not even Pansy knew that Papa had been a deputy sheriff for Licking County in those days. Papa told stories about the Apache Indian brave, Geronimo, and Billy the Kid, the famous outlaw. Every ch child around the file fire had heard of Billy the Kid because many stories had been written about him and been purchased in five cent novels. Most people came to know him as the Kid as the, came to know the Kid as a notorious outlaw who had killed lots of men, most of them bad men who were trying to kill him. Papa told him that he Papa told them he could tell the real story of Billy because his neighbor and good friend just down the road, Frank Co. had shared the tale with him. Papa explained to everyone that Billy the Kid, whose nil real name was William Bonnie McCarty, worked for Mr. Co. Well, that's how he got the attention of all the kids, especially the boys. Mark and Jackson both asked, Mr. Hunt, did you ever meet Billy the Kid? Papa answered, sure did. He was just another hired hand who worked on the Co. ranch. All of us ranchers hired young men like Billy. Some of them might have had some problems in the past. We never asked anything about that, as long as they did their job and followed the rules. McCarty was a good worker, as I recall. When all the trouble had started, I, I left for a few years, so I wasn't there when he got into trouble with the law. What trouble, Mr. Hunt? Mark asked. Papa answered, well, Mark, in those days there were some big ranchers. Mr. Coe was one of them. But there were others, and they were quarreling over who was going to be in charge of the territory around Lincoln. Some people sided with Mr. Coe and his men, while others looked up, took up with some other folks. They, some were cattle ranchers, but some were sheep ranchers like me. I could see a war brewing between these two groups, so I sold a lot of my sheep and got out while the getting was good. There, was a good, there were good people on both sides, and I didn't want to get in the middle of a war. You see, kids, when a war occurs, lots of innocent people get hurt. Sure enough, that's what happened. It turned into an all-out war. Jackson spoke up. I know, Mr. Hunt, I've read about it. They called it the Lincoln County War. That's right, Jackson, said Papa. 
I can tell you boys have done your homework on Billy the Kid. Remember, though, his name was really just William. William Bonnie McCartney. McCarty. So, let me tell you about Billy. He had it rough growing up. He never knew his father and his mother, who was named Catherine, died when he was just a teenager. For a while, he had a stepfather, but he was gone most of the time and never paid attention to Billy or his brothers. It wasn't long until Billy began to get in trouble with the law here and there around the countryside. At first, it was nothing big, but one thing led to another. Before long, Billy was, want was a wanted man running from the law. There were lots of stories about Billy the Kid in his younger days. Most of them are probably not true. What I can tell you is that Billy rode on to the Coe Ranch looking for work, and my friend Mr. Coe hired him. I remembered seeing him a couple of times, but to me, he was just another one of the ranch hands, that's all. Then, when the trouble began to stir in Lincoln, the two sides began to fight and shoot at one another. Mr. Coe was shot and killed in one of the gunfights, which led to more men, more shooting and killing. Billy got involved, like so many others. Only Billy found the man who shot his boss and shot him dead. Billy wasn't far from the parts. Far wasn't from those parts because he had already had a bad reputation with the law. The sheriff and the governor made an example of him. He was tried and sentenced to hang in, but broke out of jail and was again running from the law. Eventually, they caught him. He was shot and killed. Papa continued. The thing is, kids, Billy didn't have to end up dead at the age of 22 years old. He was a talented young man. They say he was smart and skillful with his hands. He might have been a captain in the army or worked in law enforcement, using his unusual skills with a gun to catch criminals instead of being one. They say he was friendly. He was a friendly and interesting person to be around, and a great, great storyteller. He might have been a salesman or a merchant or maybe even a banker. The trouble with Billy is that he didn't have anyone to love him and give him direction in life, like all of you do. He didn't have a church to attend or a school most of the time. He wasn't taught about God or how to serve him and how to respect authority. Yes, kids, Billy could have been a lot of good things. Instead, he spent most of his life hungry, miserable, and running from the law. At the end, in the end, he was just an unfortunate and happy kid who died in a gun battle. Oh, he's famous, I suppose, just because a lot of writers made up stories about him to sell to, sell to the public. But you know what, kids? I bet you if we could bring Killy the, Billy the Kid right now and sit down him down at the campfire, he would tell every one of you to never, never follow in his footsteps. I imagine he would talk about all the good things he could have done and all the people he could have helped instead of hurting them. Papa's story had captured the attention of every child in the circle around the campfire. Papa was right. The newspapers made Billy the Kid out to be some kind of folk hero when, in fact, he was just an unfortunate young man who came to a miserable and tragic end. After the story had been told, all the children were sitting around the campfire, a little thoughtful, and Mama was thinking, this is a little too serious for a birthday party. She looked at Papa and said, why don't you tell the story, why don't you tell the children, why don't you tell the children about the famous bear, the most famous bear in the world? Papa smiled and turned to the kid saying, who do you think is the most famous bear in the world? The children looked at one another, some of the kids asked each other, who's the most famous bear? But it was Emily who raised her hand and said, Mr. Hunt, I know, I know. Tell us, Emily, said Papa. Emily quickly answered, the most famous bear in the world is Smokey Bear. That's right, answered Papa. All the other kids moaned when they realized their answer, the answer was so simple, but they hadn't thought of it first. Then Rosalind spoke up. Yes, but Smokey Bear is just a picture someone drew of a bear. He isn't real. These are the kids at the beach playing and having fun. Papa smiled and said, A lot of people think that, Rosalind. They think he was just a made-up character used to remind people to be careful with fires in the forest. But in fact, the real Smokey Bear was a little bear cub that a forest ranger found clinging way up high in a burnt tree after the forest fire had been put out. Forest fire was right behind our log cabin ranch, ranch house in the Captain Mountains back in New Mexico. A careless travel traveler, staying in the mountain pass right behind our ranch, left a campfire burning. He just rode off on his horse, not bothering to put out the fire or throw water on, 
and dirt on it. And it was summertime when there was a lot of dry leaves and sticks on the ground. A fire started out and in just a few minutes, the whole mountainside was ablaze. The animals that lived in the forest could sense the danger and began to run. As this little bear cub and his mother tried to get away but found themselves trapped in the fire. The mother used her body to cover up her baby, baby cub and save his life. After the fire was out, the little cub began to wander around looking for food. Then he saw the forest rangers coming up the mountainside. He was scared, so he climbed to the top of a burnt pine tree, and fat they found him clinging to the top of it, crying. The rangers couldn't help but feel sorry for the little cub, so they carefully climbed up the tree and brought the little cub down the grounds, down to the ground. His little paws were burnt and charred from walking around on hot embers left over from the fire. There was so much ash and soot on his fur coat that he looked like a smoky gray bear, not like a little black bear. That's why the rangers named him Smoky Bear. They brought him back to the ranger office and cleaned up his burns and fed him. And he was just a tiny cub. He was just a tiny cub, not dangerous at all. Everyone was taking pictures of Smoky Bear at the ranger's office, and one of those pictures ended up in the newspaper office along with the story of the brave rescue of Smoky Bear. Before long, the picture of the story spread across the nation until everyone heard of this famous bear. Smoky Bear became the symbol for being careful of fires in the forest. At that point, the Forest Service in Washington, D.C. began using a drawing of Smoky Bear to remind people to be careful with fires. The real sm Smoky Bear lives in Washington, D.C. Zoo now, safe and protected. Millions of people have come to see him, so he's the most famous bear in the world, and he came right, and he came from right behind our New Mexico ranch house. How many of you kids have, have heard of Smoky Bear? Around the fire, every hand went up. Papa wasn't surprised. Papa always had lots of stories, and the children loved listening to his tales of adventure and life on the wide open range of New Mexico. The next few weeks were wonderful for Pansy. She loved her new friends on In and a Half Avenue, and she loved the overnight camping on the beach. It was hard to say which she was enjoying more. Pansy could have never imagined that this trip would become so interesting and full of things to learn and see. Papa was right when he said it'll be even better than school for this year. Pansy was feeling so happy she would have never expected what was about to happen next. Here's Smokey Bear. Well, the drawing, not the, the baby cub. But if you want to know what happens next, you'll have to tune in next time for Goodnight Northwood. Until then, Good night.